here comes the sovereign's escort of the household cavalry. And behind, riding in the gold coach of state, her husband at her side, comes Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Now, for the first time, people in Northern Ireland were able to join in events far away as they happened. Although their dim grey picture could not convey the full colour and spectacle on the streets of London, the broadcast provided ideal vantage points for the entire procession and allowed viewers eventually to be alongside the congregation in Westminster Abbey. The historic ritual in the Abbey was described for television viewers by Richard Dimbleby. And now, to the left, the Lord High Constable of England, Viscount Allenbrook. In the centre, the Marquis of Salisbury bears the sword of state. To the right, the Earl Marshal, the Duke of Norfolk. Attended all by their pages. And then followed by St. Edward's crown, borne by the Lord High Steward, Admiral of the Fleet, the Viscount Cunningham of Hindhoe. On his right, the orb is borne by Earl Alexander of Tunis. On his left, the rod with the dove borne by the Duke of Richmond and Gordon. Then the pattern, the Bible and the chants. And as the music rises in triumph, we await Her Majesty the Queen. Duke of Cornwall sees his mother crowned. Thousands of people packed into houses, church halls, and even around the windows of electrical shops continued to view the ceremony for hours. From the foothills of Slemish Mountain, where St. Patrick labored as a slave, the glens of Antrim follow the line of the River Braid to the village of Brashade. Here, loyalty to the Queen is to find its expression in a four-day jubilee celebration, including Northern Ireland's biggest street party. The jubilee celebrations this year will be you know, ten times this easily. Reliving the last jubilee in 77, when Ulster was a more dangerous and violent place. After a long civil war, local doctor Tony Redmond is seeing encouraging results from his scheme to foster better community relations here. Preparations have been going on for weeks, with musicians and dancers attracted from every part of Antrim and Derry. Their chairman, Neil Hall, insists all differences have been set aside. The key is, and this difficult part of, of the British Isles. These players are drawn from both sides of our this terrible thing, the political and religious divide. They come to join us and play music together and their friendships born in this organisation, which without the music would never have happened. Behind nearly every door, people and machines are at work. Costume maker Paddy McCulloch has secured a tall ship and intends to put Brashane's own royal family aboard. Working here on Prince Charles's costume that is going to be a bit elaborate and maybe not true to Admiral style, but anyhow, that's what he's having. 
Not that Prince Charles is a stranger here. He's twice visited Brashain, encouraged by the village's remarkable horticultural success, winning every major competition in Ireland, Britain and Europe. The investment in time and money has transformed the place. Out have gone the painted curbstones and loyalist graffiti, in 100,000 bedding plants and an environment to be proud of. I think the sum of the ethos in Brashena is the fact that the people have a sense of belonging, they have a stake in their own community. No government or grant, you can't buy that, nor no bomb nor bullet can destroy it. Without the support at grassroots level, none of this could have been achieved. And other Ulster communities share Brashane's enthusiasm for the Jubilee. So much so that the Northern Ireland Assembly has had to quadruple its initial budget. In this part of the kingdom, there seems to be no reluctance to demonstrate loyalty to the Crown. Is it that uh, people of Northern Ireland have more affection for the Queen, or is it really a, a statement of their Britishness? I think Northern Ireland, you know, that stretch of water does make a difference, and there are very, very many people who still, uh, you know, want to show their Britishness. I think that's basically the bottom line. But I think it's also a great opportunity for people who want to show that Britishness that, that they can, th through the Jubilee, they can show it in such a way that's non threatening to any other section of this community. <laughs> Affection runs particularly deep amongst the older generation. And in a country so long racked with strife, the children of Brashane are bringing a more positive message to the weekend festivity. Enthusiasm for the village's four-day jubilee marathon is unlikely to be surpassed in any other part of the kingdom. Did the mayor not give you a lift? No. <laughs> <laughs>
gentlemen, please can I ask you to stand back now, please? Please, could you stand back behind the white lines along the road? Or on the pavement where...
reckon that at least 5,000 people have actually turned up uh, for the fireworks later on, but also for the lighting of the beacon here. And in fact, the Mayor of Ballymena has kindly consented to wait until we're on air to light the beacon. So we're going to give them a wave now, and here goes the lighting of the beacon.
now share in some prayers of intercession. At Her Majesty's coronation, she was presented with a Bible with the words, This book is the most valuable thing the world affords. Here is wisdom. This is the royal law. These are the lively oracles of God. Precious God, we have thanks for the Bible, the most precious gift that earth affords. We pray for all the people of faith and for those who seek faith by which to live. For Bible scholars and translators who open the word of God to others. For those who preach the gospel and for those who follow the Bible teachings, that through the Holy Spirit, your word may inspire and direct them. In the life of our land, your kingdom come, O Lord, your will be done. Oil for anointing. Central to the coronation was the anointing of the Queen to bless and concentrate, consecrate her for her holy office. We remember this and seek to follow the example of the Queen's dedication to duty. We rejoice that in every generation people hear your call to commitment and faithfulness. We pray for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, giving thanks for her selfless dedication throughout her reign. May she be blessed and strengthened for members of the Commonwealth with whom we share this jubilee. May we grow in understanding and respect for those who bring healing and health to the sick and suffering, and for those who care for prisoners and refugees. May they be enabled, encouraged, and supported, that through all who hear your call, your healing hand may be laid upon the nations in the life of our land. Your kingdom come, O Lord, your will be done. Carol and soul for service. Every Monday Thursday, through the ceremony of the Royal Monday, the Sovereign demonstrates the majesty of service. Following the example of our Lord Jesus, he washed the disciples' feet and said, You are to do as I have done for you. Love and God, we remember with gratitude that we have cared so much that we washed the disciples' feet. We pray for those who seek to be in Christ's loving presence in the world, for those who mourn the loss of loved ones, for those who are sick, anxious, or disillusioned, for those whose needs we know, and those whose needs are known by you alone, that through your grace, your transforming power may bring hope and confidence. In the life of our land, your kingdom come, our Lord, your grace. Living in community. It is the Queen's wish that we celebrate the community life of our nation and Commonwealth. May this community life be a living fellowship of mutual trust, care, and compassion. We recognise the joys and challenges that bring along to each other. We pray for all persons of charity and for those who are in the hospital and and the first and the of services. For those who do the Christian Christian life, and difficult to take these two years, to make a moment to a homeless, refugee, stranger, or foreign people, but to love your people, to love your Christ and your family and your life for your own. During the singing of this next hymn, a collection will be taken um, in aid of the Salvation Army and Bernardos. <laughs>
vows she made 50 years ago to serve, I believe are still vital and real to her. Commitment, a core value for the life of the Queen. There would be many today who would say that people are not prepared to commit themselves or give themselves to a task in today's society. Certainly to sign up for life is an anathema to so many. It's so self-evident in our society today with the breakdown of marriage relationships that people are not prepared to commit themselves to marriage, just as one example. In the coronation service, the bowl and the towel were given to the Queen as symbols to emphasize her commitment to service. She has given of herself in service to her people. Jesus, we are told in the scriptures, gave the greatest example of service recorded in John's Gospel. He washed his disciples' feet and said, you are to do as I have done for you. What a challenge for all Christians to commit ourselves to serve others in our respective communities. Paul writes to the Philippians, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. What a commitment to make, and how society would be different if this was accepted by all in society, that we are prepared to think of others and to commit our lives in service to other people. We thank God this afternoon for the example of the Queen in her commitment to service. For me, one of the most interesting aspects of the life of the Queen and displayed in the coronation service was that the Queen was anointed with oil, symbolizing her consecration, her dedication, to serve God, being set apart to fill, fulfill the holy will of God in her life. All acts of consecration involve acts of renunciation. Her Majesty consecrated her life, and of course there have been so many privileges, but there's also been sacrifices, to do her duty because she was consecrated before the Lord. Her example is a challenge to the people of God today and to this nation. The scripture calls us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. In other words, consecrate yourselves to me. That's the will of God for all his people. In the prayer of Jesus recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 17, we read, Consecrate them by the truth. Thy word is true. As thou hast sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I now consecrate myself that they too may be consecrated by the truth. We have much to celebrate for the example of Her Majesty, but may we also be challenged in our ordinary, everyday lives, that we may be led to acts of consecration, dedicating our lives, based upon the Word of God, dedicating our lives, our ordinary, ordinary lives, to a life of service to others. We give thanks to God for the continuity that Her Majesty has brought to our nation, for the example of commitment, and for the fact that she was consecrated 
unto the Lord and has therefore given to this nation an example. May we respond as her subject and may we respond to God to consecrate and to give ourselves in the service of others in future days. May God bless you, each one. come to the end of this Thanksgiving service in this time of golden jubilee let us dedicate ourselves anew to the service of God our nation and our world I invite you to stand as we read this act of dedication together and I invite you to remain standing until the final hymn Lord of our lives and God of our salvation, grant that we may live by your word. Remember with thanksgiving Her Majesty's example of dedication and service, and commit ourselves afresh to serve our local community, nation, and world for the building up of your kingdom, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
God grant to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all people, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you all evermore. Amen. We sing together, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Hello. Hey, hey. Hello. 